measurements, I drew lines and extrapolated from the orientation of Trump's head out to the unknown, out to the right. And so what I did is I dropped the line to the left, I dropped the line to the right, and I came to an average. When I came to an average, it pointed at the position that the news organizations were saying that um, Kirks was in, not to the actual position where his body was discovered. So that confused me even more. And so I started looking for a video to see, well, because the, the, the images I were looking at were just the Google Maps, where they really don't give you any elevation of the building. So given my lines were going to the position that the news organizations were placing him, I, I wanted to determine what what is below that, you know, uh, because certainly there can't be two shooters on that roof, one in the position where all the news organizations are putting them in and, and then the other position where his body was found. And so we go to the next slide to again show that his body is indeed to the far right. And so then finally the, the, the slide number six where I, where I have the white line and the yellow line, the white line represents the, the calculated trajectory that I could do from Crook's shooting position, which is where his dead body was. And as I drew the line to the left, you know, I discovered from video from Sky News, a helicopter video, that there's a second floor window that perfectly lines up with that trajectory. And not only is there a second floor window, but the video footage clearly shows that that second floor window is open. And so now if we go to slide number seven, you can see in that red dotted rectangle that that window is open and anyone can go to Sky News uh, helicopter video uh, showing Crook's body. And as the helicopter swings around, it's very clear to see that the window opens outward and the glass and the frame of the glass are indeed opened outward. And so that kind of shocked me uh, because common sense would say that uh, you wouldn't want to leave an elevated window that's open with a clear line to a presidential candidate unsecured. And so that's what that is, is that's an elevated position, a second floor window with a direct line of sight of President Trump speaking at the podium. And the line just happens to line up directly to that open window. And so that was kind of disconcerting because, you know, who would do that? Who would leave uh, such a position open and unprotected? But apparently they did. And a quick side note on that, uh, not that it would matter, but it seems, again, here we go with another coincidence that uh, local police department also mentioned when the Secret Service director um, inadvertently and incorrectly stated that there were two sniper teams inside the lower building where Crook's body was found. Uh, she was corrected that she was wrong by local law enforcement who said that the, those two sniper teams were actually in the adjacent building, which oddly enough is where that window is that you're talking about. Yes. And when I heard that, so uh, if we go to the next slide, that's part of the, the uh, Sky News helicopter sweep. As you can clearly see within that red triangle with open window, you can see the frame of the window is open. So there's no question that that second floor window was open. So let's say that there was a counterterrorism sniper unit inside that. So the, we, we now know that Crooks was on that roof for 20 minutes. So they're sitting there inside of that window and they don't know that he's on that roof or they're sitting inside that window and can hear people screaming, there's a guy with a gun because those people are right in front of that window, just a little bit to the right. There's a guy with a gun on the roof and they don't look out to the window and see him on that roof. So if their explanation to try and cover why an unsecured elevated window facing directly in line of sight to Trump is that there was another sniper team in there why didn't they react to crooks being on that ceiling uh, i'm sorry on that roof and so the next slide so so i saw the open one i wanted to make sure that the logistics worked out and so the next slide shows the scale of the the first building that had crook's body on it to the second building and so what i did is i took a measurement of how tall the first building was up to the roof line and then i colored that same rectangle purple and i stacked them 
to show that indeed that second window, as you can see the shadow on that window, it's definitely open. That that window is elevated over that roof so that shots could go through it. And the one thing you can see is immediately to the right, there's a tree. So again, if there's a counterterrorism sniper team in that window, why would they pick a place to perch that has a tree immediately to their right that shields them from a significant field of view that they would want to be covering? So it, it, it wouldn't make sense to me, but I'm a novice, that a sniper team would be in that window as a point of protection. But it certainly does concern me that uh, that window was open and in a building that the Secret Service has described as unsecured. Uh, so if we go now to the next slide. So this is where I, I, I captured the angle. So I have President Trump, who is looking out to the right at the jumbotron at uh, a chart that's on there. And that's the best I could do, capture the very moment before he gets nicked with the ear. Then the second screenshot is the very moment that his ear is nicked by the shot. And so what we do when we look at this is because the bullet nicked Trump's ear, that tells us that the flight is parallel to his head. So basically, if we look at the bill of his cap, President Trump unknowingly is looking directly along the line of fire at the sniper who shot and grazed his ear. Now, as you can see, that movement takes that position to the left where that second window is, that second floor window, not to the right where Crook's position is, the moment that Trump's ear is hit. And so I show that now in the next graph. That's the moment that Trump is looking at the jumbotron uh, to his right and slightly behind him, uh, follows the white line. But when he makes a head correction and turns more to the left, that lines up the bill of his cap to be parallel to that line of fire. And again, this is the best we can, I can do with the rudimentary tools uh, that I have at my disposal. And then on the next slide, you know, I, I just show that it's from what I can do in my limited uh, ability, that that is the shot that grazed President Trump's ear uh, came from that window. So then I looked to see, well, are there, is there anyone else seeing the same thing? So I saw this excellent video now in slide 13 created by AI Telly. As you can see, they put the shooter again to the far right. And then they do the trajectory of his shots. And especially the shot that hits Trump's ear. And so that's the next shot. It shows that it's 137 meters, 450 feet. The window would be a little bit further behind that. And so then they show the perspective from the stalker in that position. And indeed, the tree that we saw in the earlier thing is to the right. It does not uh, interfere with the line of sight to Trump's position. And so based upon the sniper being that position with the calculations that they did, and again, that's the position uh, that uh, the other news media were putting the sniper at. You can see that at that angle, the bullet grazes Trump's ear because it's flying parallel to his head at that orientation. So my independent calculations agree with their independent calculations that the flight of the bullet came from the area of that second window. So again, the next slide shows, you know, the bullet path. And then now finally, the other slide from AI Telly. And by the way, they did a great job. Again, it shows a sniper there on the roof. That's where the sniper had to be in order to make those shots. But we know now that Crooks was not in that position, that he was to the right, uh, a significant distance. So finally, we go to the final slide. And so it's not a sniper on the roof in that position. It's a sniper in that open, elevated, unsecured window with a direct line of sight of President Trump that was left unsecured. So quick question here. I know in our offline conversation, we discussed this, the distance roughly that you've calculated that the actual shot came from on top of that, uh, not on top of the roof, but from the window, how far was that from actually where Crooks's body was? Uh, 
I, I don't have a, a, a distance in feet, but uh, just from uh, looking at it, it's 50 to 60 feet. Okay. Trump's uh, 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 Kirk's body from this shooting position where the line uh, lines up with the second floor window. Okay. And so in the final slide, I just show, you know, a, a composite of different pictures. And one of the pictures is a shot, an image of Trump from behind. Again, if you look at the bill of his cap, the bill of cap, bill of his cap at the moment he was shot, and I tried to capture it from this video that was taken from behind him, is pointing directly at the position of the sniper that uh, grazed his ear. Which also, if you look, based on what you've already stated, you were saying he was looking at the teleprompter and you can see the teleprompter just to his right and it does appear that he's looking directly at it. Yes, he, he, he just barely had turned his attention to the teleprompter and barely away from that jumbotron and that little movement of his head saved his life. One of the things that, and I appreciate you doing all this work, John, this is pretty incredible work. Um, I've been looking at lots of other videos, trying to piece some things together and to just answer some questions in my own mind, not necessarily to put out to other people, but what confirms what you're telling me is that same video. They're talking about the report of the actual shots, right? When you listen to the video from Trump's perspective, the main video that everybody has seen where Trump's in the picture and Trump's speaking and looking at the teleprompter and whatnot, um, the rounds do sound a little bit different, but there's, they're also very similar because they're, they're all coming from a distance. So they're, they're getting, you know, the, the bodies are absorbing some of the sound as far as the crowd. Um, it's also reflecting off of metal buildings, uh, rooftops. There's so much going on that's playing with the sounds as they come from a distance. However, there's a video that I looked at early this morning that lines up with what you're saying, because it's a video of this group of people who spotted that shooter just to the side of that building. The ones, you know, we've seen the video a hundred times now where, Hey, he's got a gun. He's got a gun where people are, they saw the guys go up the building. They saw the guy on top of the building and they've got pictures of the guy on top of the building. Well, this is the first video that I've seen of the actual gunshots being fired from that same position. And the first three shots are distinctly different in sound. And I'll explain a little bit further. The other shots sound like either a smaller caliber or they're farther away than the first three shots. And then that one more, that's the six I'm, I'm unclear on. Let, let's listen to this again muffled and then right that's what i hear i can tell you this people are going to say well that was the sniper well there's disparaging stories first of all they say the sniper shot one time so the counter sniper fire should have only been one round and that one round came much later after that first eight or nine shots. So they're saying that the first eight or nine shots were from crooks. But when you listen to this audio, and of course I'm going to be playing this, it's very obvious that not only are those first three rounds different, but even it almost makes you wonder if there's even a third gun because there's a third different sound. And then that one more, that's the six I'm, I'm unclear on. Let, let's listen to this again. Muffled and then, right? That's what I hear. The reason why I will point out again that this, I feel like backs up your claim that a shot was fired at least some shots were fired inside a building, inside a window. It's because the first three shots that we hear from the side of this building do not have uh, an echo. 
which would indicate it being fired from inside a building. And the inside of the building would have captured all that sound, uh, not allowing it to bounce off the, the walls and the rooftops and things of that nature. Where if you notice the other reports that come out after the first three shots do have an echo. Here's an interesting thing. One, two, and three, besides being muffled and further away, it doesn't have echoes. Here we have, this is a shot here, this one, this peak. Oh, darn it, I don't have my thing up again. Here, here we go. So this here is a shot. This is an echo. Very clearly an echo, and a shot in an echo, and a shot in an echo. So this is actually critical evidence, because you hear that k -k 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 -k. There's echoes coming off. So that also allows us, again, to analyze where was this gun. But first up, we just have an absolutely different sound between the first three. There's no echo, it's much further away, it's more muffled, it's, it's just not in the same place at all. But these next ones, very different sound, totally different weapons. Okay, full stop, we have two separate weapons, plus we have no echoes coming off of the first three, and then we do have echoes coming off of the next set. And that last one, that's different. That's And that's not the sniper shot. The sniper that would shot certainly is indicate to me later. that at least the first three shots were closer to where this video was shot and were inside something which captured all of the echo. What are your thoughts on that? I agree with your analysis. I also listened to, to that video and to the explanation that the audio expert gave. And uh, I would agree uh, that there was more than one shooter. And I, I think that... Uh, these are some of the questions that we need uh, to extract from the head of the Secret Service when she testifies before Congress uh, next week is how many shooters were there and then how many shots did they fire? How, how much brass, you know, as we talked about when we were discussing earlier, did they collect from Thomas Crook's position? And then why was that second floor window with a clear line of sight to President Trump left unsecure? And why was it open and brought no attention uh, to securing it? I agree. And one quick point I want to point out as well, the other videos that I was just talking about also validate a lot of what you were saying as far as mentioning that the way your lines line up mathematically from where Crooks was and where the round more than likely came from on the second store window were 50 to 60 feet apart. Well, from the sound analysis that this other gentleman did on his video, he's stating that that, su that distance was about 70 feet apart. So give or take a little bit of room for error. It sounds like you're, you guys are coming to the same conclusion about how far away at least two of these shots likely were. You're, you're doing it based on the physical, um, I guess, coordinates or whatever, physical measurements of where Crooks' body sat and where the lineup of the window was, and they're doing it based on the math as far as how long the reports are in between the shots, um, as far as the distance that it traveled and the echo that it gave versus the report. And again, y'all are arriving at the same thing. So again, I think they're validating a lot of your claims and you're validating a lot of their claims. Yes, and if there were two snipers or more, certainly they're working in concert. And so the question we have to ask ourselves, given the absurdity of crooks being on top of that roof and the law enforcement's knowledge of him being up there. Um, was he the patsy? Was he the watch the moving hand while shots that were being done by someone with better marksmanship who's trained to make shots at that distance were shooting? Was Thomas Crook the cover for the person who had the best ability to take Trump out? Well, I, personally, my opinion is that, and this obviously is just my opinion, I have nothing to go on on this other than video that I've seen. With the video that we saw of crooks meandering around in the field, I mean, just wandering around the field, like somebody who had lost their car keys would be wandering around in a field. This guy, he was not being sneaky quote unquote. He, he wasn't trying to evade anybody. He was literally wandering around in front of that building with not a care in the world. I don't think he was told 
the actual plan and how it was likely going to end that day, because he was certainly not scared of anything at that point. And the video, when I saw that video, that's the first thing I thought of that, you know, either this guy's drunk high or um, completely stupid because it's being, the video is being shot from the perspective of inside the crowd. And you can see hundreds of people just sitting there looking at crooks. So he was, he was certainly not trying to be elusive. Yes. And uh, I believe he, he made a social media posting or, had communicated with someone in, in by written text or something where he said that uh, that day was going to be his premiere. Right. Not his right. end, but his beginning. That's right. That's right. You and I talked a little bit about this earlier, and this is one thing that um, I feel like is a major, major missing piece. I don't know what kind of uh, forensic investigation has actually taken place, but there have been questions. And of course, you're raising more questions about calibers, how many rounds that's been discussed feverishly since this started. My comment now and has always been when you are firing a round from a modern rifle, there's a casing that <laughs> that's it, that's housing the round and the gunpowder in it. That casing is probably landing eight to 10 feet from wherever you shot your firearm. This guy was on a roof, Crooks. He was on a roof to the far right or left, depending on how you're looking at it. And he was farther to the top of that peak. If this guy had shot rounds, whether it was three, whether it was four, whether it was all eight or nine, I don't think we would have to look very far as to count the number of rounds, mainly because everything would have ejected out of his, his ejection port to his right, which there was plenty of space, a good 50 to 80 feet of roof line still available where those casings would have fallen. And if one were to miraculously be able to roll all the way down that entire roof, they would obviously have fallen just to the bottom of that drip edge where that roof ended. So, I'm a little perplexed that we don't have a handful of uh, rifle casings that we can look at. I also wonder why we don't have a handful of rifle casings. And also those projectiles that were fired, you cannot tell me that these guys shrugged their shoulders in the investigation. And I bet that that uh, that fairground is still closed off. You can't tell me that they shrugged their shoulders and walked off and said, eh, not really worried about the projectiles. I guarantee you, they have every projectile that was shot. So we should not be guessing about caliber and round count at this point. And that's another thing that is a red flag to me as to why we don't know those things. Because if, if this were a gang shooting in downtown D.C. or Detroit or something like that, we'd have all that information already. And the, the medical staff, if any rounds were still in somebody, would have told us what caliber as well. Agreed. Agreed. They would have policed the brass uh, almost immediately uh, once they secured the scene. Well, John, this this helps, but again, as I stated earlier, it creates more questions. Um, do you have anything else that you'd like to add to this? Because this is a pretty remarkable uh, thing that you've come up with as far as, uh, and let's just say this, I mean, we're not stating that this is an absolute fact. This is based on hypothesis on, and you using actual math and things to determine these areas. Do you have anything else to add to this uh, supposition of yours? Yeah, just one thing I want to make sure that, uh, you know, the listeners understand is I, I neither you or I are saying that local law enforcement or the Pennsylvania State Police or the Secret Service detail were involved in the shooting at all. Those that had the feet on the ground. Um, but someone made the decision to make that building uh, to not be under the protection of the Secret Service and not to be secured. And we need to find out who that person was and their line of command, because that was the decision that led to the assassination attempt on Trump's life is that decision to leave that building unsecured. I agree. And let's hope this video will generate some thought and get some people asking those questions and maybe the right people will find this video and be able to answer those questions for us. John, I appreciate your expertise and the time you've spent helping us detail this and spell it out. And um, again, you know, there's a reason why we're not showing your face. 
making sure that we're pulling from your expertise, but not putting you in a position where you're compromised in any kind of way. So I do appreciate you taking the time to do that and, and taking this type of risk in order to do this. I appreciate your time, Paul, and hopefully we can get to the bottom of this and uh, that the, the presidential candidates on both sides, Republican and Democrat, will have better protection and better courses of action to protect them from the nuts that are on both sides of the political aisle. Absolutely. Thank you, John.